Welcome to Growth with Portia, a weekly conversation for your personal and professional growth. Here is your host, Portia Booker. Hey listeners, welcome to Groove with Portia. I'm your host, Portia Booker, and yes, this is my real name. So question for you, did you bring your curious mind today? If so, I don't want to keep you waiting. Let's dive in. So today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm normally very a uh, scripted person, but today I'm not going to be. I'm going to speak from my heart. I never realized how much my journey, my mental health journey, has really garnered me the opportunities that I have today. We tend to bury the quote-unquote worst part of us, but really that tends to be the best of us. Mm-hmm. So question for my listeners today. What part of you are you burying that's supposed to be the message of your life that you're really continuing to perpetuate as the mess. Let that sink in. So today I am joined by a survivor of not one, but two enrollments in the school of adversity. After being hit by a drunk driver and being left with a life altering brain injury, along with being imprisoned by the medical world's statement of, this is your new normal. She refused to believe this was her permanent space. Now, graduating from the school of adversity and making a full recovery, She is helping others walk across the stage by learning how to take control of of their mind. So without further delay, welcome to Groove Portia, Miss Danielle Matthews. How are you doing today, Danielle? I'm fabulous. Good to be on with you. Excellent. Danielle, you know, I always love to start my conversations with gratitude. What are you grateful for today? Oh, I'm grateful. I, it's interesting. Yesterday, uh, I live across the street from the Amrit Yoga Institute and they really were integral (laughs) in my awakening and me learning so much more about who I was. And yesterday they sold their property. And so I am just like immersed in gratitude for all that that was. And it's so interesting because I think times have changed. Like as one chapter closes, another opens. And I think, you know what, it's so reflective too of, of their transition after decades on that space and to what they're opening into next and going virtual and meeting more people globally. I think, you know, the same things happened with me. <laughs> it's like I started small and now my message has gone global and it's it's kind of cool to see the, the parallels with them. But that's what I'm grateful for, just their teachings. There's a guru over there. His, um, his name's Guru Dev and he is turning 90 uh, here in a month. And he brought his teachings over from India and back in the 60s. And it's just, it's powerful to be, you know, what are these single truths that if we knew would unlock everything? It's like, that's the secret to life. And I feel like they gave it to me. So that's, that's my gratitude for today. You know, Danielle, I love what you mentioned about when we see things take a transition, right? You know, that's where you got kind of like, your redevelopment, your second chance in life, right? And then <laughs> oh, yeah. now we see how even the places where we got our second chance, they get a second chance as well. And we get to be a part of that expansion, knowing yeah. that they were a part of our journey of elevating. And now we're still able to appreciate them being in our space and us watching them. So I can definitely agree with you there. I would say for me, Danielle, you know, as I mentioned before that I went a little unscripted today because, you know, as I'm going through this grief journey, I write in my gratitude journal every single morning. Some people ask me, Portia, are you really up at 3 a.m. writing in your gratitude journal? Yes, I am actually up. If you see that I'm in, if you see in my Instagram or Facebook story that you see that I'm writing in my gratitude journal with the timestamp, that's exactly what time I'm up. Because no matter what, even if I have a rough night sleeping, There's always joy in the morning. There's always something to be grateful for. And I've written in my gratitude journal that I'm grateful for my grief journey because truthfully grief is like what you said. You know, it's that door that closes. It's one door closes, but plenty more open. If you're open to seeing it from that lens of opportunity instead of the lens of of adversity. Right. And so Daniel, I got to ask this. You know, when I introduced you, I mentioned about how that label of this is your new normal was the catalyst of your journey. And some people know, a lot of people know my mental health journey, where when I was first diagnosed with bipolar disorder, the psychiatrist, I'll never forget it. She she flat out told me, well, your brain's broken. Really? Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> So my brain's been broken all these 20 something years of my life and nobody's ever said anything. Hmm, 
I'm not buying that Humpty Dumpty tale, but that's for a whole nother day. But Danielle, the, the thing of it is many of us have been in that same boat like you where we've been spoon fed this narrative that this is your new normal. And unfortunately, we become a prisoner of that. We become so consumed with that label that it becomes the weight and the crux yeah. of us not being able to elevate. And so, Daniel, what did it take for you to not buy that prescriptive narrative and seek an alternative? I'll say this. The question comes down to, are you living from the outside in or are you living from the inside out? You know, if you could put it into an equation, I used to be, I used to teach math <laughs> all about equations, but if you say, look, the external world plus your internal response creates your reality. So the external world, if we think about it, Portia, it seems like 99.9999% of it, we have no control over, right? Life is just flowing and happening. You know, my car accident that you mentioned, I was hit by a drunk driver, right? I did nothing wrong that morning. I got in my car, I was on my way to a wedding, you know, and this man got in his car drunk and, and passed out and hit me. So I had no control over that situation. My internal response initially for the first year was frustration. I was pushing back. I was saying, this isn't going to be my life. I want to get back to my normal. I'm going to go back to work. I mean, I pushed, 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 refused to accept my injuries. And I was just exacerbating them because I wasn't giving my body time to rest and relax and to heal. And so my reality was terrible. I was having panic attacks on a daily basis. I was highly anxious. I became very depressed. My personality completely changed. I couldn't work. I was back home with my parents living in basically a dark room because I couldn't handle light, couldn't handle noise. And that was my reality. And so then this doctor says to me, Danielle, your body's done the healing that it's going to do. And this is your new normal. You need to adjust your life around it. And I thought that is not a reality I can live with. Like at 24 years old for the rest of my life. Are you kidding me? And I, I wish I had said it out loud, but in my head, something just went, you're fired. And I said, I'm going to find another way. And so what I started to do is I realized, look, the one thing I can control is my mind. And it takes a while <laughs> to figure out and observe and realize what really is like misthinking in there and how you can, again, take the external world and figure out your internal response to it. And so what I did is I said, okay, basically there's new rules in the game. <laughs> so I can't work. I can't do this. I can't do that. I'm not going to focus on that stuff. What can I do? And I thought, okay, I can walk the dog. I can go sit in nature. I can hang out with my grandparents because they don't mind sitting in a dark room, <laughs> you know, and we can talk about their life and their journey. And I, I started to cook. I started to really enjoy combining different foods. And like, I started to read um, a lot. I started to, to journal just like you every single night before I went to bed, I forced myself to write at least one thing I was grateful for. And it was hard. I mean, I had thought my world had ended, you know, I couldn't do anything The Danielle. I was like that woman no longer existed. And I thought, well, what can I be grateful for? And then it was simple. It was like, the strawberries in my salad, they were delicious today. <laughs> you know, my friend called me like, you st I saw a beautiful sunset. And all of a sudden it was just like, how can I just write one thing? Like there's a hundred things. And I literally rewired the thinking in my brain so that my reality was one where I was happy. I was in a space of gratitude. And what was so cool, Portia, is it shifted the people around me because I think for a long time I was looked at as a victim you know, whether people around me wanted to, like, they weren't doing it intentionally to hurt me, but I felt that way too. And when you're in victimhood, it is disempowering because it means you've given your power out to something else. And I went, no, 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 it's in here. I'm going to take ownership. I'm going to live my life in a way that I can find pleasure, that I can seek joy. And I don't know what it's going to look like as far as my injury actually repairing, which we'll have to get to that. Cause that was a fabulous story. But I, when I did that, like, my parents shifted all of a sudden they like relax and we're like, Oh, she's going to be okay. You know, cause I was happy. <laughs> and what's incredible is when you're in that space of joy and gratitude, you draw in the answers, you draw in the people, the situations, the circumstances, uh, exactly what you need to open up the next level for you. And that's what happened in my life. But I mean, <laughs> to put it simply, I don't know. I actually, I wrote an ebook recently about this exact thing. Cause I thought, that was it. It was controlling my mind. I actually called it mind control. It's all in your head because it is It's literally all in your head. And 
for, we have to actually do a lot of self-reflection and that can be difficult. Sometimes it's hard to look ourselves in the mirror <laughs> and to recognize like, oh, I'm not a victim of that. Like, I'm just, I'm interpreting it that way. You know, I can take ownership here, um, which is a tough pill to swallow sometimes. But when you do, you just, all of a sudden, like you're stronger because your, your sense of support is internal. You're not leaning on any, anything external. You know, Danielle, I love what you mentioned about ownership just now, because mm -hmm. we tend to, unfortunately, based on the societal prescriptive narrative, it's easy to play the victim card instead of stand firmly on your own playing field and say, you know, this is my life. I can't allow everybody else to be the author of my healing endeavor. It starts with self. We tend to, when, oh, woe is me happens to us, right? We immediately seek external, right? I'm going to kind of play on your mathematics. <laughs> we seek external healing or external comforts mm -hmm. instead of going internal to really say and ask ourselves that tough question, what do I have control over? Yeah. What can I do in this situation? Like you said, finding that gratitude within that situation that you were in, right? Even with me in this grief journey, I've expressed gratitude. And, and to your point too, about being the victim, you don't want to be painted and labeled because that also brings you down too when internally you're thinking that based on the external ideologies and principles that have been spoon fed to us over and over again from childhood up, but that's for a whole nother day. <laughs> and, you, know, you brought up about your ebook, share with our listeners about your ebook, where they can get it, it is available. Tell us about that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, it's on my website uh, and it's just brainbodyself.com slash ebook. <laughs> and uh, you can download it there. It's short, it's sweet. It's honestly meant for people that are, are needing to overcome obstacles that are just like butting up against life and going, why is it not giving? And I think, you know, not to give it all away, but it's like, you have to realize that the challenges in front of you right now are there for a reason. Like my car accident happened for a reason. I truly believe my higher self orchestrated that because I had to learn, I had to grow. I was meant to be on a very different path and journey. But it's like our challenges, they sort of shape and guide us to where we're supposed to go. Like they, they teach us what's within us that we can pull ourselves, you know, pull out of ourselves and, and journey into the next phase of our life. And like, I look at life now as a game, right? <laughs> so it's like, okay, a game would be no fun if you knew how to win. Like it literally, like, why would you even start? <laughs> You know, you've got to have the challenges, right? That's what it makes. We have this beautiful mind, you know, it, it was given to us for a reason. And, and we have so much more, like we are tapped into the infinite. Always. We have a, a source of communication flowing through into us all the time. But like, again, because we're seeking everything externally, a guru dev who I mentioned earlier, I I'll never forget one time sitting over there and him saying people spend their lives literally going across the world, looking, searching for the answers, not realizing that all they had to do was turn around because the answer was right inside of them. <laughs> and, and when you realize that and you realize that, wow, the people that are triggering me and making me upset, they're my teachers because they're showing me something within me that's not resolved. Their actions they probably had very little to do with me, right? They're just living their life, doing their thing. I got triggered. Why? Well, something unresolved is in there, you know? And so in my ebook, that's what I get into helping people realize like all of this is unfolding for your development. And until you realize that the lesson gets stronger and stronger and stronger. I, you know, I say I was crashed awake because my lesson was so intense. You know, I got hit head on literally <laughs> by a car and it took me, a journey of years to realize all that I was supposed to learn through that, you know, and to plant me squarely on the path I was supposed to be on doing the work that I was supposed to be doing, which has to do with the technology that helped me to recover, which we can get into in a moment. But I, yeah, it was my gift, honestly, like I just, there's so much within me. It's like, look, if I can help anyone that's on the path behind me, going through a similar journey, 
if I can give in some way the lesson so that I can collapse time for you, <laughs> you don't have to, you know, take as many years uh, to get the realizations that it took me. Like, that's what we're here for. You know, I believe we're all connected. We're all going through similar challenges. And so if we can learn from one another and take the lessons from one another, um, it, we're going to live a beautiful life. And so that's why that ebook is there. And um, I hope that it, it reaches the people that it's meant to. Danielle, I feel like you read my favorite book called The Game of Life by Florence Scovel Shin. Ah, yes, because, on my nightstand. <laughs> yes, because that is something that I've said many times that man is not your enemy, man is not your friend, for man is your teacher. Every event, person, place, thing that you encounter is for you to develop. It's for you to learn. And like you said, if something triggers you or what I say strikes a nerve, then that means that's an area of improvement for you. Instead yeah. of looking at it as that's not me. Hmm. Again, we got to go internal, put our pride to the side and really ask ourselves again, those tough questions and hold ourselves accountable because we're not supposed to be in the same boat of occupancy for 15 years of our life. We're yeah. supposed to elevate. Life is about transition transformation and change right yeah and that's like what you said you were hit awake during this car accident right and how many of us will see the gratitude within that and I say the same thing about my mental health journey my breakdown was truly my breakthrough to my yeah. true calling today it was the best earthquake I could have ever had in my life and I've survived too but that's for all <laughs> Danielle Let's go into your recovery journey. I mean, because I know so many people considering the world that we live in where one shoe fits all when it comes to any life altering or quote unquote deemed irrecoverable yeah. condition. Right. So please speak to that. You know, how did your recovery journey really take precedence and how did you, during your recovery journey, not fall back into that imprisonment of this is your new normal? Yeah, well, a couple things. I think, again, it's the mind. So I was started meditating. I did meditation every single day. And that helped me, again, just like connect back in with the truth of who I am and connect back in, into a space that is just filled with peace. And so that then stayed with me throughout the day. So it, you know, that helped me emotionally. <laughs> but let's talk physically, because I know there are so many people out there, different diagnosis, different whatever name is put on it, you know, that they're told, oh, it's chronic. Oh, this is just part of aging. Oh, this medication you're going to have to be on for life. And I'm here to tell you like, no. <laughs> so what happened for me was when I made that shift, you know, and I, my emotional state changed, it's like, I got my pass from that level of life. And I, I went to another, all I can say is like frequency, like it's this vibration, this energy that I was holding and the answer came in, you know, and I only later understood what I really did and tapped into the law of vibration, but the answer came in in a way totally unexpected. And this is how it happens, right? Things sneak in the back door. An acupuncturist called my mom. She had been a student of my mom's at my mom's yoga studio. And she called her and said, I've started using a technology. It is revolutionary. I've never seen anything like it in my practice. Nobody can be allergic to it. It's completely non-toxic. It won't contraindicate with anything anyone's doing. And she said it goes in and it gives the body more of the signal it needs to find where the body is damaged or to find what's been turned off genetically or antioxidants, whatever it might be. And it turns it back on. And so she went and she was telling my mom about clients with digestive issues, you know, getting back into alignment, clients with hormonal things, getting back into alignment, like she just all these things. And she said to my mom, I have every reason to think it would pass the blood brain barrier could help Danielle. And so my mom intuitively was like, this is what we've been searching for. You know, she brings this home and uh, the biologist in me, that's what I got my degree in was like totally resistant. Cause I went, there's no way, <laughs> like, there's no way something like this exists, right? Here I am seeking, looking for an answer. It's literally on a silver platter in front of me. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's impossible. You know, cause the ingredients in this Portia are water and sodium chloride. Okay. Riddle me that. And I went, there's no way I blew it off. So my mom started using it and I'm watching as my mom, who's got bone on bone in her hand, something that I think a lot of people deal with, you know, stiffness, inflammation, they can't use their joints or my mom was her hand. She couldn't make a fist. And I watch after six weeks of drinking this stuff, 
she's got full range of motion back in her hands and you can visibly see the inflammation is down. And I'm like, biologist and me goes, Oh, it's a placebo. <laughs> right? Like, There's no way Then my dad starts using it. And my dad has an old knee injury again, told it was permanent. Like he it ended his football career, like nothing you can do. He's just dealt with it. He works out, but he wears a brace 10 days of drinking it. I'm out walking the dog and my dad runs up and he's like, Danny, look. And I'm like, what am I looking at dad? <laughs> and he goes, I don't have my knee brace on. And he said, I feel like I'm 30 again. Like I've got so much energy. I'm recovering quickly. Like this stuff's incredible. That stimulated them to go do research. And here's the crazy thing, Portia, this company with this product is called ASEA. Their, their technology is redox signaling. And what they came back and told me was, look, Danielle, this is a massive field of science. It's just new. It wasn't in the textbooks when you were in school. Like it is a massive field. And this company, they're the only ones so far that figured out how to stabilize the molecules so you can get them back in your body. It was thought to be impossible. It's like trying to stabilize a spark. <laughs> you know, these molecules are very fleeting. And it's like, if I let a sparkler and gave it to you, like it'd be gone before you know, I could hand it off. But they figured it out. And so they said to me, look, this stuff can't hurt you. It might help you. I started using it and it wasn't immediate for me, but three months into using this, I was just drinking eight ounces of this stuff a day. All of a sudden the pounding that had been in my head relentlessly, relentless for two years stopped. I started to be able to concentrate again. I had energy again. I, my mom will tell you my personality came back and I had been working with a therapist, a cognitive therapist who'd been working with brain injury and stroke for 30 years. And she said, Danielle, never in my career have I seen somebody have such a rapid recovery so far out from their initial trauma. She said, with this type of injury, it doesn't happen. And she said, what the hell is that stuff you started drinking? And that was a catalyst. You know, you can like look at life and you can see these inflection points, like these moments that change everything. I can still, I got chills. I can still see myself sitting in her office. Her name's Debbie Gale and, um, and saying to her, I have no idea. I thought it was salt water. And she said, well, clearly it's not. So what is it? And that launched me into learning what it was. And I got on the phone with a member of the medical board of this company. And he started to explain to me how the body is a sack of saline, how the body is so smart. It uses the sodium and chloride from salt and the hydrogen and oxygen from water to make a bunch of different combinations and a bunch of different molecules. And he said, it's, it's so simple. It's brilliant. Like hydrogen peroxide, it's probably in all of our houses, H2O2, water is H2O, like one more oxygen, very different molecule, very different function. And so he just opened me up to this world and I went, holy cow, here I am a biologist who taught for a couple of years who's had a massive transition with my own health because of this technology, all of this is coming together. I'm clearly meant to be educating the masses on what this is and how it can support their body with their challenge. And it like, it just all dawned on me. And I went, holy cow, I didn't know what I was doing. I never talked anything to anybody about anything. I started sharing my story, Portia. And like, I, I get goosebumps. Like I have touched thousands of lives with their health challenge, their problem, just by simply educating them that, hey, this is an option out there that the mainstream doesn't know about yet. <laughs> like it will be in every household. And so, you know, to me, it's just like, because I held the space of being able to understand, look, this challenge was happening for me. It woke me up to my ability to control my own mind. Then I started to be able to create from that space. And now what I know with the law of vibration is like, we decide. And so now that equation I talked about, I'm like, you could turn that thing on its head because you actually, through controlling your own mind, you start to draw in the external circumstances, people, places that will create your reality. But until you learn it the first way, you can't flip it to let it work for you. <laughs> and so now it's like, I'm in this fun space of creation and I meet the most incredible people like around the world, you know, yourself included. Like I, I, you know, our mutual friend on it's just like, it's amazing the beings that have like come in and it feels like we're all playing in this space. And it's like, we want everybody else to come too. <laughs> you know, Danielle, I gotta say your journey of recovery is one that is not new, but very few of us truly see yeah. the benefit of seeking an alternative, right? Yeah. And when you were bringing up how the mathematical equation, I love to use slope intercept form, 
for mine. Y equals MX plus B because the MX, right, is mm -hmm. our mind. Yeah. Because we, we have to think different. We have to shift different no matter what. So I love how we and you are both on the same plateau when it comes to incorporating mathematics into our daily life. Like <laughs> that is smart algebra right there. Yes, it is. And that, <laughs> you know, and, and Danielle, when I even think about your journey, you know, when we think about the way that we learn science, biology, all of those things in school, it is as simple as what we think. And when you brought about the placebo, it's literally like the placebo effect within our, our system, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if we start replenishing what has been lost and restructuring and rewiring, like what yeah. you mentioned, then of course, things are going to start circulating within our system. So it's going to create a triple domino effect once we stay consistent yeah. on that same road. Yeah. And it's just amazing to see this unfold when you were deemed a lost cause. And now you are the cause that people are <laughs> to get their life back on an even track. So Danielle, what a what an amazing turnaround for you. And I'm so grateful that you were able to come on and share that with our listeners, because so many of them are currently in that boat of this is your new normal. But yet there's that part within them, that drive that's like, no, this is not my permanent residence. This is not my prison cell or my deathbed. There's more to me than this. And I'm so grateful that you're able to come on. Danielle, you know, I got to ask this too. I mean, you're very passionate about what you do. I mean, you like you mentioned, you're super creative. You got your ebook coming out. You also, you know, are a yoga facilitator, public speaker. You know, Danielle, how do you prioritize your self care and find that balance between your passion of helping others and also maintaining your mental well being? Yeah, it's it's part of every day. So I wake up. Like I wake up and I always sit in silence and then I go out into nature and I bring my dog. <laughs> like that's how I start every single day. Cause it just, it centers me. It gives me time to reconnect with my truth to make sure that I'm, I'm living in alignment. If anything feels off, it gives me the time to analyze, well, what's off and why, you know, and what can I do to bring it back? And uh, that, that time is like, just every day I have it. Like I wake up with enough time to know that, Hey, that hour is blocked for me. And if I have something starting earlier, I get up an hour earlier. Right? It's a, it's a non-negotiable and, um, and having my dog, he's like, you know, at this point, he like knows the routine. So if I'm even though I'm out of bed later, he's like, mom, you know, he's nudging me. <laughs> Let's go. So he's my little accountability partner. <laughs> um, but I also, to this day, like I'm sitting, I got the journal in front of me and it's like one thing of gratitude every morning you know, that I start in that space. And I just throughout the day, I also, I use life, like Guru Deb, he calls it meditation and motion. But like, I use life as my teacher constantly, like when I'm on a call with someone, and you know, I'm, I'm running into resistance. I'm like, huh, is this within me or within them? It's almost like I can pull myself out of the, the dialogue. And I'm like witnessing myself having it and going, what are you supposed to learn here, Danielle? How are you supposed to be like navigating this situation? And so like literally my, my practice is life. It's every conversation. It's every interaction. It's all the things that I'm doing. And, um, I think when you look at life that way, like everything's always unfolding for your highest development. So I get excited about everything, even when it seems bad, like I got some news that someone perceived as bad this week. And I'm like, interesting. What am I going to learn here? <laughs> this is unexpected, not the way it was supposed to go. And I'm like, okay, that means something else. Like I, you know, I've got this pear tree in front of my house. It got riddled with ants, riddled. Like it just, it, all the ants ate the inside of the trunk. Well, that tree just like it started to shoot off new branches. And then now ultimately it's gone underground and it shot up a new trunk over here. And I'm like, just the challenge is just guiding you, right? It's just showing you, hey, not this way. We want you actually to move over here. And so that's just how I look at life. It's like, huh, all right, that's happening. I thought I was going that direction, but let's go this way. And you got to be like water, right? You just don't resist. You just got to flow. Because if you're in resistance to life, whatever you're resisting, it will persist. And so you need to just relax, get resolved and flow around. Yes. 
even flow. I mean, and sometimes, and that's also part of surrendering, right? Knowing that's it. <laughs> what you have control over and what you yeah. don't. I mean, you know, we make all these plans, goals, and aspirations, right? And this goes into manifesting, right? When we manifest something that we truly want, I think people have it backwards, right? They think, oh, I put it out into the universe. And then a lot of people just sit around. No, you still have to be putting in the work to get there. Yes. Like what you did. <laughs> and, you know, yes. Making the full 360 <laughs> recovery. You yeah. obviously surrendered to what was out of your control but you still took ownership of I believe there's more to me than this you didn't settle and that's what I think is when we're trying to elevate we don't settle we don't just sit around idly we put it out there into the universe but we continue to move forward no matter what and when there's resistance that's okay right that resistance to me is that Test. I love to call it the rubber band effect. You know, when you go and work out at the gym and you're like yeah. on that machine that always <laughs> kicks your butt, <laughs> that's the resistance part to really test you, to ask you, how bad do you want it? You want it bad enough? Keep moving. But I, I digress there. Danielle, this has definitely been a fantastic conversation. I thank you so much for coming on and mm -hmm. sharing just your journey of going from literally impaired by life's challenges to I'm paired with all of the equipment that I needed to be successful and share my story to create a bigger cause. Yeah. So I'm truly grateful for this conversation. And Danielle, for our listeners who are tuning in, if they want to connect with you, learn more about you, get your ebook, is there a website or a social media handle you can share with us today? Absolutely. Yeah. So you can, you can go to my website, brainbodyself.com. Uh, on that website, literally I talk about what you can do for your brain, your mind, uh, your body, which is this redox signaling technology. If you're interested, just click the button that says, reach out to Danielle. Um, and then yourself, the, the meditations that I now teach and guide people through, there's ones on there that you can just do for free uh, and try. And then if you want the ebook, it's brainbodyself.com slash ebook. All of my Facebook and Instagram handles are like connected in with that website, um, but I'm just my name. So it's just Danielle Matthews with an underscore on either end for Instagram. And on Facebook, it's just facebook.com slash discover intention. So I would be happy to, to connect. You know, I think people that are listening to this, like you are for a reason. I now know everything is, is divinely guided. And I don't know if you were seeking to overcome a challenge. I don't know if you were seeking something with your health or you have a family member that is, but the answers are right here. And as I said, like, this is what I know I'm meant to be doing is to help educate and help people that are on the path, you know, coming up, coming up behind me. And um, I look, look forward to talking with all of you. Yes, absolutely. You're so right, Danielle. You know, I always say that we're not placed here to just exist. Everything yeah. happens for a reason. It happens for our greatest good. And yeah. we have to learn to shift our mindset from why is this happening to me to what is this trying to teach me? Exactly. So always adopt that student for life algorithm in life because you'll <laughs> never be disappointed. You'll always be able to grow and elevate because I firmly believe that when we reach a certain age, it's time to unlearn those toxic <laughs> ideologies and beliefs in that that kept us in prison to relearning a new way of thinking and rewiring our brain to be able to elevate in the space that we're supposed to occupy. Absolutely. Well, everybody, that was Danielle Matthews that you heard from. And that concludes another episode of Guru Portia on this Motivation Monday. Thanks for listening and have a great and awesome week, everybody. Mm -hmm.